I think I never knew that there is a community, like more than one community for PhD students out there. It was very surprising for me. And I, if, I wish I knew that like when I started out my PhD, because it would have been a very good space to be in that it's okay. Like whatever I'm feeling, I'm not alone in this. I am Anushka. I am studying in Japan. Currently doing my doctorate, my PhD in uh, microbiology. I am hoping that I uh, finish soon. We've connected since a year ago and she has seen this channel starting from maybe the first 10 people. So I would love to bring Anu's perspective to this channel. How can I best serve all of you as PhD out there? Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD students to get motivation, peer support and practical tips during your PhD. Today, I'm delighted because I get the honor to meet one of my viewers. Let's welcome Anu. And first of all, let's have a coffee. Thanks for having me. I hope we enjoy this coffee time together. <laughs> Don't be shy. I hope so too. <laughs> I remember we've met on Instagram and you've reached out. You said you can't stop watching my video and you have so much problem that got resolved by my videos. I felt sorry you had that situation, but I also felt really honored that I was in that space and position to help your studies. Could you share a little more about how you come across the videos on PhD Coffee Time, how that videos or a few videos could have help your PhD in the last year? Last one year has been very tough on many levels. Of course, the pandemic did add to that. I think when I was struggling with directions for my PhD or mostly on the self-discipline part of it, that's when I came across PhD Coffee Time. I think the first video I saw was about the SMART goals. The best thing was that it was 15 minutes, so I, I could totally binge watch all of that was there at that time. <laughs> I still think the length of your videos along with the content is what makes it more accessible to the students because a lot of our brain energy goes into work and stress and everything. So we don't have attention span of more than 20 minutes. I think it's okay to identify that we are struggling. Before I started my PhD, it was like, it is one of the highest degrees that you can get. Somehow it's very romanticized in the people's mind when they get into it, that it's a very special degree that you are getting. So it will be a very smooth journey. It's very romanticized. Yeah, I can yeah, that's the yeah. best word for it. But once you get into it, you know that not everybody's journey is going to be the same. Not everybody is going to struggle like I did or like Vira must have experienced, but not everybody is going to, again, have a very happy circumstances to deal with. So it's okay to identify that you are struggling or you are having some problem where you need extra help like have a system out there. I think I never knew that there is a community, like more than one community for PhD students out there. I wish I knew that like when I started out my PhD because it would have been a very good space to be in that it's okay, like whatever I'm feeling, I'm not alone in this. Especially if you are like studying abroad or far away from your family in any way. I do want to mention PhD Coffee Time has three goals. One is a day-to-day task that I have spoken, right? I was postdoc and I taught students little tricks on Excel, little tricks on Zotero, uh, ImageJ. Motivation and peer support are the two other values that I have. And it's aligning to what you have just said is I would wish that when I was doing PhD, I was more aware that there are other people just like me. A lot of time, we are also uh, the only person that look like us, the only person that come from that country working on that problem. The process can be really isolating. So one of the mission I have is to establish videos and establish conversations out there. So people like you and me back then can get access to this type of resources. Could you share with us what are your top maybe five or three platforms that are active in and you find a lot of values in that other PhD students should check out? So first, before like any particular platform, I would say just follow academic Twitter, follow that hashtag, not just for your support or for information, 
even for memes, uh, like all of them are very relevant to what you are feeling. So uh, that's the number one for me. I check at least once a day <laughs> if I um, like I don't have any other obligations. That's the 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 primary one that I discovered it late, but I think it's very important. The second would be I would say. So when I started watching PhD Coffee Time and I was connected with you on Instagram, there was one weekend when you shared about Papa PhD. So then I went to listen to it. And now it is one of my favorite podcasts that I listen to. When we are doing our degrees, we want a job after this, right? So it's a very good place to start. And I think same as PhD Coffee Time, they also have a Facebook uh, group. You can connect or get the updates from there as well. Actually, so all of these are very connected. When I got connected with David, he uh, mentioned that there is a LinkedIn group, which is called Grad Grid. And that is again, a networking group for all the graduate students. So it doesn't matter at what level you are and what is your current agenda. If it's just networking with people or just keeping up to date with what is happening out in the world, that's a very good place to start. Also like just to make yourself feel better that you are being a part of the LinkedIn community, which is like make a mark outside (laughs) our PhD. Even if you are liking those posts and making the comments and like some people know that you exist in that group, that also helps somehow. (laughs) Yeah, these will be my top three. Other than that, on YouTube, I think there is one channel, which is Office of Graduate Research Flinders University. There are vlogs on channel by Tara. She is a very well-spoken mentor anybody could have, I feel. And she has a lot of great tips for everybody at every stage of their research or PhD, or I think even some master's thesis and research paper you have to write at every level. If you are that person who needs a very structured workflow to go through, I would definitely recommend her channel for that. Another resource which I want to mention, it's called Scientist with two T's at the end. It's a very new community, so it started last year. But you have a lot of different things you can access there. So you can put up your blogs if you want to practice your writing or you want more people to read your writing or put your video contents there like you can use it as you use Facebook or any other social networking platform but these people will not get annoyed (laughs) like if you are sharing your research paper they will know that it's okay and that kind of discussions can happen I will definitely recommend you like sign up for that community it's a very upcoming but like I find it really helpful a lot of times just to go through the blogs content or like the video contents I think they also have like a tab for jobs at this point most of the jobs are located most probably in UK but I think with more time more employers will advertise their jobs there also so yeah do do check it out. There are a lot of uh, active community of PhD students on Instagram as well. So you can like follow hashtags for like PhD students or like doctoral research or something like that. So there are a lot of students who are more confident (laughs) and talking about their PhD life. So there are like students who are doing genomics or bioinformatics or Um, like anything which is not at all technical, but they are very confident in communicating that. And from there, you can find their community. So they have like some channels on Discord where you can work together. Or I would like to mention one Slack community, which is for if you are like struggling with writing, then definitely this group will help. That is called Grad Write Slack. So they started this group, I think, with the motivation that they can have those um, Pomodoro for like five, 25 minutes timers and they can work together. So because we all need that accountability, <laughs> I cannot do without deadlines or accountability at all. So <laughs> I think that group, if you are writing your thesis or your paper or if you are in a distress about something in your grad life, that's a very good place to be. I love that. 
I need to have some links by you later on, and I will post all of them for everyone to just click and join. But I swear, everyone, I didn't pay her. She didn't have to talk about <laughs> her PhD or graduate. I couldn't say one without other. Like if I go back and back tracing, it's just like they come in a package. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm happy to hear that, and you've said it. So well, better than I would have said it. Thank you so much for sharing what works for you. If you imagine a new PhD student who who find this video on Google, they will be immediately equipped in five minutes. <laughs> I think the day to day life would be a lot more supportive versus being isolated. And I think you're bringing a lot of values to us today by sharing your journey. Thank you. <laughs> We are coming to the end of this quick interview and coffee chat. If there is one video you may want to request PhD coffee time to make, what would that be?、Mm, so, I think you haven't yet discussed about the career options. Yeah, like the job prospects other than postdoc. So I really like that video about your whether or not you should go for a postdoc. So from that, if somebody decides that they don't want to go for a postdoc, then what are the options that they have? Yeah, I think that one will be a Good place for me, also. <laughs> so I think many people will relate with that. Actually, it, this is maybe after the video for Papa PhD. I hope in this year videos I can cover a few of the tips that I personally have used, and also other platform and communities to be featured, so that we all feel more connected with career resources. There is a saying: PhD are like stem cells, so we <laughs> may be differentiated into different roles and. One way to become like the other cells are to be hanging around all the other cell types, so that you get the <laughs> stimulation and signals and all these chemical cues, so that you differentiate <laughs> into like them. I'm a big believer of that, and I hope after this video, this will be serving more students because of your experience. As well, I am growing and learning from you to serve you better in the future. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all the next time. <laughs>